wasteland outside. As one, Brimstone, Glimmerlight, and myself hopped over the metal rung of the door and charged toward freedom. We should have known they'd be watching the entrance. Our gallop was brought to an almost immediate halt by the scene ahead of us. The slavers were, for the most part, utterly devastated. The ground was littered with the wreckage of exploded wagons, their steel bars bent and warped around flipped running bases. The stronger winds kicking up were sweeping loose cloth, torn barding, and indeed, even the bloody specks of dust into a small but foul dust storm across the plains around the hillside. Equipment was strewn around the corpses of any who had resisted or what was left of them. Steel Ranger weaponry left little in its wake. Worse, there were three Steel Rangers standing directly before us. The dark metal of power armor towered amidst the swirling dust above every one of the prisoners they had taken. I saw a very angry-looking Mosin lying against a rock, shrapnel wounds preventing him from moving. Each Steel Ranger bore massive weaponry, the first with dual long rifles similar to what I had seen Griffins carrying, the next a combination of Gatling cannon and seemingly a box of missiles, while the third had what seemed to be a small, portable piece of artillery across his or her back. Gender was impossible to tell. All three wore identical types of suits. HALT! All looters will remain where they are. The voice, male, held authority and force, booming from external speakers in the helmet. I felt my hooves lock and stop on the spot, falling to the ground beside Glimmerlight. Brimstone started grimly at them, snarling deeply as his hooves scraped the ground. I saw the two lighter-armed rangers brace themselves, their weapons swinging to face him. Behind me I could still hear their comrades inside battling with Barb's raiders, but it seemed out here the rangers had won, and had the entrance completely in their favor. No pony could come out of such a thin exit into this firepower. We're slaves, paladins! Glimmerlight's voice rung true over the wind, albeit tired and shaky. We mean no harm, and we own no loot. Just let us pass and you'll never hear from us. Apparently she did not find this a good time to mention her own past allegiances. I began to feel my muscles clench in fear as the leader, bearing the huge cannon, looked away from her and curiously turned his head directly to me. "'Tis a lie. The little one will step forward and relieve himself of the Pitbuck fragment." "'What? Sundial's Pitbuck? I had just finally begun to feel like it was truly mine now. His life and the meanings he was giving, they weren't for being stored away. He wanted them told and known to some pony who found it. It's just a non-functioning fragment, Paladin. It's no use. I checked it myself. Just a piece of old scrap now. Not for you to decide, slave. We have trained scribes who would restore it to glory and take its place amongst the records we guard. Now pass it over immediately. Glimmerlight scowled, muttering quietly out of the side of her mouth. Philadelphian scribes couldn't tell a working pitbuck from the rod shoved up their asses. What was that? Look! It's a hunk of scrap. Ugh, I'm going to regret this. I am of the Buckland Cross Steel Rangers, Initiate Glimmerlight, daughter of Paladin Candy Floss. You have my word that the Pitbuck will be returned to our records when we get out of here. I'm repairing it myself. I can quote the regs if you really want me to. Standing beside her, I never realized how much I was shivering. Brimstone looked ready to charge them, however pointlessly, any second. Meanwhile, the rangers had every gun trained on us with an intensity I hadn't even seen in the most loyal griffins of Red Eye's army. This could go very bad very quickly, and we didn't have much time if Barb's raiders won out inside and surged from behind us. Much to my surprise, however, the leader raised his weapons away and trotted forward, sliding the helmet from his head. A dark orange stallion of rough face and weathered eyes glared at Glimmerlight. I know Candy Floss. She is a strong paladin. But the word of the rangers matters little these days between brothers and sisters of the chapters. Traitor! Steelhooves has declared his independence of us and taken many of the rangers with him. The orders are in uproar, Buckland Cross included. Our own order has left for Stable 2 in Sweet Apple Acres, Initiate Glimmerlight. After we have extradited all remaining technology from here worth taking, we shall join them. I am afraid that I cannot trust such a... rogue element as you to your word. However, as a matter of respect for your mother, I will permit you to leave peacefully if you hand over the pitbuck. The mission is above all. Initiate. You know this. Steelhooves went rogue? Glimmerlight barely did more than whisper it. 
a look of odd longing and wishful nature in her eyes before shaking it free. The paladin ahead narrowed his eyes, stomping a rock so hard it cracked beneath him. That is our only offer. Give up the pit buck. The last command was shouted at me. Offended that I even felt my limbs twitch to obey, I just staggered backwards, holding it closely while I trotted on three legs. Now, slave, I will not ask again. The weapons lowered, pointed directly at me. Please don't. My mouth barely staggered the words out, shaking my head and trying to work out how to just run away. I didn't want to give it up. The two rangers flanking their leader advanced, thudding their hooves on the ground as their large weight began moving towards me. Swerving, Brimstone leapt before them, growling and scraping the ground with his front hoof. I'd seen that look before when he had murdered an innocent slave. This was too close to kicking off. I'd have to give it over. It meant so much. But what we were after was worth so much more to risk a confrontation over sundials. The lead paladin's head exploded. Droplets of blood sprayed in all directions, coating his armor, his comrade's armor, and mixed with the spilt blood of the slavers below. With that, hell was unleashed. Sniper shots rained down from above, high-caliber rounds sparking off armor and cracking off rocks. The Steel Rangers reacted with speed that defied their weight and size, swinging their weaponry to the skies, to where I saw the Griffins loyal to Red Eye dive bomb from the clouds above. The sky in between quickly became a death zone, as the Rangers unloaded their weapons indiscriminately. Rockets roared, cannons whirled and screamed amidst the thick booms of the huge rifles. A crisscross of heavy firepower that sent Griffins whirling through the barrage on their rocketing descent. Screaming, I fell to the side. My ears assaulted and stinging under the overwhelming noise. Bullets pinged off rocks around me, kicking up plumes of earth or loose gravel mere feet away as the rounds ricocheted off ranger armor towards us. Follow. I'd only heard a fragment, but that was Brimstone's voice. Scrambling, I scampered from rock to rock, staying as low as possible. I saw the rangers thundering away as little blue-tinged grenades tumbled from the sky above. I hastily shielded my eyes from the magical blast. A dull thump rocked the ground. A rocket whooshed, and an explosion lit the sky above the flying V of Griffins. Spotting Brimstone and Glimmerlight running for the flanks of the battle, I saw Glimmer look back and scream for me to get out of the area. She must have thought I was behind her. I put my head down and ran, before skidding to a halt in shock. With a wet splatter, a shredded griffin corpse collapsed ahead of me. The blood erupted from his chest on impact, spraying across the front of my body and face. Crying out loud, I turned and galloped directly away to the side, into the smoke to avoid the remaining rounds that pulverized the fallen body. Murky! This way! Follow my voice! I know you'll hear me! The gunfire, downwashed from the griffins, and the furious stomping of steel rangers were kicking up so much dust that I couldn't see anything. Corpses littered the ground around me. I passed the paladin that had been shot in the head, realizing I'd somehow wandered back toward the middle. Red-eyed slavers the rangers had taken prisoner crouched behind rocks, screaming to the skies. Doubling back, I again headed for where I'd last seen my friends through the dust. Yeah, you go get em, Stern. Kill those metal fuckers! A huge female griffin swooped low, a large anti-machine rifle in her talons, and landed behind the rifle-wielding ranger. I had seen her before. This was Red Eye's second in command, Stern. Possibly the most lethal griffin in Philadelphia. Whipping that rifle around with almost freakish speed, she planted it right against the ranger and pulled the trigger. At that range, the armor stood no chance, even on steel rangers. I witnessed a small hole punched in one side and half of a pony disgustingly blown out the other. Propelled by the blast, the ranger's armor collapsed. Before it had hit the ground, Stern was gone again, taking to the skies with a powerful stroke of her wings before the remaining ranger could bring its weapons to bear. Banking into the wind, she rejoined the head of the griffin formation. Ponies and griffins died on all sides around me. Caught in the middle, I only now saw the truth of the wasteland. I had once believed that slaves suffered and slavers prospered. That was how it worked. But here... As I felt a wet crunch, my hoof recoiled as it landed atop the chest cavity of a dead slave, eyes lidless and staring upwards. He lay torn wide open by steel ranger weaponry, presumably as he had tried to run from the stable. Slaves killed by rangers? 
slavers around me falling from the skies as they were torn from those skies by the even one remaining paladin. Nearby lay one of the proud warriors, Stern's work. Behind me, I knew there would be more coming after either the raiders or rangers survived. Then it would begin again with whoever won out here. No pony on any pony's side, just one huge circle of violence and distrust. Barb hadn't been wrong. Staggering over the sharp rocks to the side of the road leading up to the stable door, I fell against one of the large boulders dotted around. I'd made it out of the melee itself, but I was still only meters away from it, crawling through clouds and keeping below rounds punching through the air. I could only hear snaps, gunshots, and screams, and more rangers charging from the stable, followed by the howl of raiders chasing them. This had just escalated. I had no sense of setting, no concept of clear lines of battle, or which side was winning. Just one huge mess of confused sensory overload. I galloped for all I was worth, passing slavers trying to grab weapons around me, only to be torn apart while fighting back desperately. I saw raiders leaping on them, biting throats and feverishly bucking. Rudimentary knives and gifted weaponry for the job was used on their masters. One raider with blood pouring down one side of his face saw me, screamed and gave chase. Come here, little buck. Gonna get ya. Screaming, I ran, hearing his hooves clatter on rocks behind as he grabbed a discarded dagger and gave chase. I couldn't see anything. Where was I going? Murky! Murky! Wait, left? Or was that right? I couldn't tell! I hadn't known battles would be this confusing. What if something just hit me? What if- Gotcha! Screaming in terror, I felt the raider leap on me from behind. His long strides had caught me far faster than I'd imagined without seeing anything in the dust. I bucked with my right hoof, catching nothing. Briefly, I felt a struggle as I tried to get away, his mangy hide rubbing hideously against me while we fell, rolling one over the other down the shallow slope. With a wing-aching thud, he landed atop me. Looking behind me, I screamed again as I saw the knife in his mouth descend and land clean. I had been shot before. The sheer shock had immobilized me. But this... I cried out, throwing my head backwards and howling into the air in agony while I felt the four inches of cold metal penetrate my left shoulder and twist. My ears picked up the sucking wet sound as the wound opened. My scream didn't stop. I howled, begged, and cried as the weapon yanked out, leaving me to bleed. Thrashing on the floor, I tried to hold a hoof over the wound crying in pain as I registered the feeling of a new, wet hole in my shoulder. The raider reared up, ducked as a griffin whipped overhead, and licked the knife clean with a delighted giggle, watching me squirm and scream. Suddenly he glanced around. Ah, shit. You bleed out. Blood flows in the wasteland, little pony. Blood flows. I'll be back for you. Without warning, he left, the reason only becoming clear as I felt the passing of a minor earthquake at least to me, of a steel ranger galloping past into better cover. I simply lay there, flailing among the rocks, bleeding amidst it all, screaming for anyone, from Glimmerlight to Little Pip, even my mother. I wasn't alone. A griffin was trying to clutch her lower body nearby, after shrapnel had sliced across her belly. My throat was becoming hoarse from shouting, rough and sore. Already I was feeling lightheaded. Rangers, gallop to the city! We shall bring them low in urban warfare. Griffins! They're trying to retreat! Hound them! It occurred to me that my hypersensitive hearing was picking up both sides' commands. The fears of being left alone to bleed out amongst the dead and dying began to filter in. I don't want it to be slow. By all the goddesses, I didn't want to be left here for that. It hurt so much. Then I was being pulled, roughly and without care, whimpering and clutching my shoulder. I saw the trail of blood behind me on the rocks. The sight made me want to throw up. It wasn't a small amount either. Ahead of me, I saw a steel ranger firing in indiscriminate circles at a shadow that seemed to bounce around him. With sudden jerks, I saw the steel ranger flinch as the shadow passed by him again and again. Barb. Feeling myself being dumped, I saw shapes around me. Whimpering pathetically, I tried to fight them off with my good hoof to get up. The raiders had pulled me behind the rocks to gut me with a knife, or execute me with that pistol, or- Murky, it's me! Stop it! What are you- 
Glimmer's voice stopped as I felt more than saw her pay attention to my shoulder. Blood was flowing freely. I tried to reach for her. Oh! Oh, fuck! Brim! He's hurt! They got him! It won't kill him immediately. Get him in the wagon now! Finally, my vision focused as I saw Glimmerlight bent over me, shielding me with herself, lifting me towards something. Wait. Mosin's armory wagon! The thick metal-plated wagon lay on its side. I could see the huge figure of Brimstone, unmistakable by silhouette, even through thick vision-obscuring conditions, heaving and lifting the massive wagon by his own strength. Creaking, the old Fun Farm circus trailer finally lurched back onto its wheels. Behind Brimstone, a figure began running directly for him, a bayoneted rifle held in mouth. <laughs> Brim! Behind you! My scream pitching to the point my voice broke caught even Glimmerlight off guard, twisting off me as she too saw the furious charging figure of a slaver trying to prevent our escape, his gas mask fallen to dangle from his neck. Slipping his assault rifle from his back, Brim flipped it into the air, caught the barrel in his mouth, and swung it hard. The butt connected solidly with the slaver's own gun, knocking it clean from his filthy mouth, along with a few yellowed teeth. The return stroke snapped his head around far too quickly to be healthy, landing the slaver face down at an awkward angle, quite dead. Brimstone looked at the rifle in his mouth, now snapped in two from the impact before spitting it away. Unbreakable. Aye, right, you vodka even old bastard. Crying out in pain as Glimmerlight pulled me into the wagon, I flopped onto the floor. I could feel her jump in behind me while Brimstone hooked himself to the front. I saw puncture marks kick through the metal sides of the wagon, some penetrated, missing us by scant inches. Glimmerlight yanked me backwards, away from it, and toward the back. I tried to do it myself, but my hooves were like lead, barely able to function from the exertion. Brimstone bellowed back from the front. Hold on. They're going to gun for us as much as any ranger. So we'll use the scraps as armed cover. Brim, the rangers will- They have bigger problems than some escaping slaves. But if we're near them, then they are a bigger threat. Hold on! Stuck in the back, I screamed again as I tried and failed to hold the blood in. Why couldn't I stop it? I didn't want to lose my blood. How would I get it back? I felt dizzy, thinking stupid thoughts. Glimmer. Glimmer. Hush, Murky. Let me have a look around here. With a jerk, the entire wagon began moving at a rate far faster than it was ever designed for. Items fell from shelves as Brimstone dragged it over the rough terrain. Doing her best, Glimmerlight pulled the shutters with her magic and dragged over a box bearing the same symbols as my saddlebag. Drink up. Oh, Murky, I'm so sorry. As I felt the purple liquid held to my mouth, the entire battle seemed to drain away into the background, replaced only with the occasional snapshots of griffins on the retreating of the rangers. Evidently, their armor let them keep pace, as I felt them gallop all around us, but I couldn't concentrate on much for long. It hurt so much. Please stop it hurting. Glimmerlight simply held me as we put our trust in Brimstone Blitz's determination. Even as I felt the healing potion aid the pain and begin to stem the bleeding, I still just cried at the memory of the raider attack. I hadn't even properly realized how afraid I was. The things that happened out here in the wasteland. In many ways, although I felt ashamed at how I looked like this, I kept thinking how much safer I was with them. Sniffling, I pushed my head towards Glimmerlight's shoulder, crying it out. <laughs>